Hey everybody, happy Monday. Last week when we looked at the markets on Friday in this video series, we talked about how we think that the uh, sort of post Fed reaction that we saw on Thursday, so the risk on move largely into long duration tech stocks and to some extent industrial stocks as well, we think that it might be short lived. What I'd like to do today is to look at the seasonality, which uh, we're seeing a strong divergence from traditional seasonality, which makes it all the more interesting this year because we do have a, a U.S. election and maybe a big U.S. election or an important U.S. election at that. So what I'd like to share with you right now is a chart that... Um, should uh, help for perspective and i'm going to get rid of some of these lines in just a second but i want to keep them on for perspective so before we even look at that i think um hopefully everyone knows i'm clearly on the record of saying listen seasonality charts are nice to know uh they are to a large extent something that work better in bull markets when it relates to equities so using them as the only guideline is very very risky in my view um, however, I do think that bull or bear markets, the uh, particularly the August, September, October, and then November seasonality patterns actually are really high probability, particularly in an election year. So what you're looking at here is a seasonality chart. You see those longer lines at the bottom here, the, the colorful ones are a bunch of years of the past. I think it's 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. I could go all the way back to 93. I don't know if I want to put too many lines here. It's the same idea. Um, what we have at the top is so far this year how the S&P 500 has tracked. And if I were to, now I'm going to get rid of all these colorful lines, but what you would see if you look at it closely, you can see those colorful lines where my cursor is right now. They start to dip. Um, in fact, they typically start to dip beforehand. And so this year-to-date move in the S&P, this new high that we're just making is really not normal. In fact, I couldn't really find a year when that happened <laughs> before. And maybe I missed one, right? But um, but I think this is really unique. And um, it has a lot to do with, with, with the fact that we're now cutting interest rates. So I think it'll be short-lived. Uh, before we know it'll probably be mean reverting. But let us let me get rid of the historical uh, data. And so now we're left with two lines. This makes it uh, all a little bit easier to see. And so this white line down here basically represents the historical average. So this is the uh, historical average of seasonality of the S&P 500. And you can see that typically speaking, the U.S. equity markets tend to top out somewhere you know, in the mid-August to early September period and then start to make lower highs. And so this fresh all-time high that we saw on the uh, what was that the 19th of September is really not within historical norm. But again, we think it has to do a lot with the cutting cycle. So out and and also in the algorithm-driven world that we live in, the algos basically have so much volume and discretion, if you will, that they are uh, kind of ignoring all that and just basically focus on on the rate cut. We think that's going to mean revert. So. Um, you know, the particularly in an election year, we do think that uh, there's going to be a, a move lower before long here. Maybe, again, like I said on Friday, I'm not sure it happens this side of the, of, of the month of September or we have to get into October. But we do think that ultimately this um, uh, this historical uh, season, seasonal weakness uh, should start to come into play here before uh, before long. Interestingly enough, if I, if I look at this, and this is a little bit different than the than the seasonality patterns I've seen in the, in the past. Um, this one here suggests that seasonal weakness actually uh, is, is over by October, early October. Um, I would argue it's going to extend into mid or even late October, right into the election. But um, uh, we shall see. The point is more that there's some seasonal weakness here in the coming weeks and uh, that this new all-time high in the S&P is probably going to be proven as a breakout fake out at least for a number of weeks. Uh, we do still think there's going to be another rally here uh, before uh, the end of the year after that. So anyway, hope it helps have a good start to the week and we'll see you soon.